and here we go. Well, hello everybody and happy day to you. This is Dr. Hank and you know what we're here for? We're here for Agent Wealth Success where we help real estate agents and brokers to increase both their business and their wealth. And I'll throw in there some joy too and, and for all of us to be happy and happier. And uh, today, you know, every, every week we have just an amazing show with top people in the United States. And this week we have a top broker and team, in fact, the number one team in Alabama. Uh, they are just amazing. And it is Jason Will. In fact, Jason is so good that he's, uh, other agents have just been asking him all over the nation in order to teach them on what he does and why he was able to build over an $80 million business. Just last year, he did over 300 deals. He and his team with an $80 million business. And, uh, and that's called Impact Agent. But with that, before we get to all that detail, I'd like to introduce you. Jason Weil, uh, Will, welcome to uh, Agent Wealth Success. Hey, Dr. Hank, thanks for having me. This is an honor. Hey, you bet. And it's a real pl uh, pleasure to have you. And I just love, uh, uh, we talked a little before the show and just uh, how incredible you are on wanting to really have, start community, you know, build communities and your teaching. So you kind of got the bug, if you will, and how great it is to help people become their greatest possibility. And uh, so do you want to just tell us a little about, I have some questions to ask you specifically on the business, but do you want to tell us just so that we're a little familiar familiar with you, a little background on you and, and how you maybe got bit, uh, started in this and, and, uh, uh, and maybe some of the keys to your success. Yeah, absolutely. So I got uh, my real estate license in 2004. Okay. So it was really easy to transact business in 2004. <laughs> like I would literally be putting an open house sign in the ground. Somebody would pull up next to me and go, where's the open house? <laughs> you know, inventory <laughs> levels were so low and it was just, you know, they were giving money away and all that good stuff. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it did, it, it didn't help me a lot because when things came so easy, I just, I never had the motivation to become a learning based agent. And mm -hmm. so I had to learn this a hard way. My evolution into a successful real estate agent, a successful real estate team owner, and now a successful real estate brokerage owner Mm. has been a very long evolution. Mm. And um, it was really after 2008 and I almost got out of the real estate business. And I wow. tell people a lot that, you know, I was literally staring down the barrel of failure and I lived to tell about it yeah. because I just, yeah. I had a mentor pull me aside and say, you know, Jason, you don't need to get out of the business. You just need to become learning based. And I didn't wow. really know what that was. Mm. And so that's what really started me on this, this mission to really impact, if you will, our real estate community mm -hmm. with the importance of self-education. Uh -huh. Got it. Awesome. That's great. Well, let's get into some of this. And I love that uh, description of the barrel and you know, yeah, that yeah. survived it that, you know, it really was that way. And I know some people that Oh, I just, I remember hearing this story about, I, maybe it was in one of those movies, but on like the hooker in Las Vegas that owned like seven houses or something. It's right, right. Yeah. And then when all of a sudden it crashed that she lost everything. And so, you know, so basically that's in real estate wasn't a good time. But here's a couple of uh, specific things that I just have, I, I really today, folks, we're going to learn some things here from Jason that uh, I want you to write down and you know how I'm always an advocate on write it down is that way it sticks a little bit better if you will but can you share with us on um, uh, you have some interesting strategies and one of them is the way you can leverage buyers to turn off-market sellers into buyers and can you help us understand that and what that strategy is yeah, sure. Absolutely. So what I am literally obsessed with Dr. Hank right now, <laughs> I am obsessed with content creation. Mm. And I just feel that far too many real estate agents in particular, I see this across all fields, all specialities, you know, small business owners, you, you name it. Yeah. Nobody's really utilizing the tools at our disposal. Mm. Mm. So I, I really feel like the buyers and sellers are out there waiting to be activated. So one of the strategies I'm encouraging agents to do is if they're going to show homes, Dr. Hank, 
let's say they're going to show homes, you know, this upcoming weekend. Yes. Let's not keep that a secret. You know, if you've got, if you've got a pre-qualified and approved buyer, you know, even better if it's a cash buyer, mm -hmm. everybody needs to know about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to know. So one of the things I'm really trying to hammer home to my team members, my agents, and anybody that'll listen to me <laughs> is that, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, maybe it's one of each. So at the three day mark, the two day mark, the one day mark, before you yeah. go show, mm -hmm. go Facebook live and tell the world that you have a hot, ready, willing, and able buyer in a specific price range and get specific, mm -hmm. you know, let them know what they're looking for. They're looking in golf course communities in this price range. It needs to have this many bedrooms. It needs to be this uh, square footage range mm -hmm. and just tell folks, say, listen, we're going out. We're going to, I'm going to show them 10 homes on Saturday. Yeah. We've exhausted everything that's in the MLS. So if you've had any thoughts of selling, if you've had any thoughts of selling and your home meets the criteria I've explained, I would love to bring my cash buyer through there on Saturday or my conventional uh, loan buyer through there on Saturday. And this could be the possibly the easiest real estate transaction of your life. And that's basically wow. it. Leave wow. it at that yeah. and, uh, and, and leave your contact information in the remarks in the text portion of this post yeah. with a call to action, call or text me for more information about my buyers or let's schedule something for Saturday mm -hmm. and always link, leave a link to your website. So oh, okay. That's just an, uh, just one example of how we yeah. can do that. Right. And, um, you know, t typically what I see is that agents that are listing may take this piece of advice and do it once, but I'm telling them every time they've got one of these buyers, they should be yeah. announcing it. Yeah. Well, see, I love that. And, and so a few things that we've talked about, and I, I wrote a few articles on in 2019 in real estate, we really need to get more and more into the social media because, and especially Facebook, because more and more people, that is where they are. You have to go to where the people are and to get the most exposure. And then the video is the second thing in 2019. So you are on the cutting edge there, Jason, on sharing with, here's how you use that as far as Facebook and the, the the video Facebook live and how you're able to actually leverage that with what you're doing share with what you're doing the buyers you know whatever that um, you also have so so that's number one so think about how to leverage your buyers and what you're doing is leveraging your buyers to get actual listings for people that don't have their home listed but you're going to show them an easy route to do that now can you tell us uh, a second approach that you have is this approach to working with FISPOs and so and for sale by owner for those mm -hmm. of you that might be new that um, and so for FISPOs that what what is your value approach and how do you uh, get FISPOs could, in fact can you share with us first maybe on how good are you at FISPOs or do you have you know do you have some statistics to share with us on on your success rate with FISPOs for you and your team well, I would say this a couple of things real quick. Uh, sure. I mean, this is a tried and true method. So cool. I have used this uh, personally for a number of years, uh, going back to probably 2010, somewhere in that time frame. Uh -huh. So if you, if you follow this approach, it will work. Cool. You know, it will work. Now, the, a key little talking point that I would like to hammer home in the minds of your audience is, is that mm -hmm that money follows di di uh, differentiation. So not similarity. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I'm at most of our, our, our peers are calling for sale by owners and saying, are you ready to list? Yeah. You know, are, are you ready to sit down and, and interview an agent, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. that's not the value approach. Mm -hmm. So the value approach is really starts with offering to, to a preview appointment to get in the door. So Dr. Hank, I call you up and I say, you know, Dr. Hank, is your home at 123 Main Street still on the market? Uh -huh. okay. You say, yes, yes, it is. Okay, great. That's awesome. Well, uh, are you interested or open to working with a real estate agent who brings you a buyer? Mm -hmm. And you may say, well, what does that look like? Well, it's typically half of the real estate commission around 3%. So if I were to bring you a buyer at a price you're willing to accept, would you be willing to compensate me 3%? And nine times out of 10, you're going to say, sure. And then I'm going to go immediately into um, 
trying to set the preview appointment. Well, great. When can I come out? Is, you know, afternoons or morning work best for you? You know, all the typical, the mm -hmm. script structure there following, you know, the roadmap there. I don't want to try to sell my value proposition over the phone. Right. Because, you know, most FISBOs are FISBOs for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them, I feel like I've had a bad experience mm -hmm. with a real estate agent or they yeah. know somebody who does. Yes. And, um, you know, we know that uh, a lot of the proprietary information that we once had under lock and key is no longer there. So okay. they really don't feel like they need us, even if they, they haven't had a bad experience. Mm -hmm. But most of them, I can't stress enough that most of them understand the importance of traffic through the door. Mm -hmm. The more eyeballs that are on it, the more word of mouth uh, information that gets shared about their property, the more likely they are to secure a buyer. So they, they want real estate agents to come through, to want yeah. to come through the door. Yeah. So um, once you're there, it's just the kind of the standard, even if it was a regular listing presentation, you want to get the guided tour. I write down a list of pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I want to look at the selling features, but also the things that might prohibit a buyer from making an offer because I'm setting myself up to have a real honest conversation with these folks. Yes. So after the 10 or 15 minute tour, I ask them if they have an additional 10 or 15 minutes to sit at their kitchen table and, and discuss some of the things that are in my notes. Mm -hmm. They always want to do that. They always want to do it. Yeah. So as soon as we sit down though, you really need to come at it from uh, a humble perspective. You mm -hmm. know, the, the criticism that you're going to offer or the negative uh, issues that you're going to point out with the home really need to be delivered in a soft way. Yeah. And before you even start, I would recommend asking for their permission to be honest with them. Uh, yeah. Get, get that permission. And mm -hmm. that way you can always come back to it. Cause especially if, you know, I've done many of these, as I said, you know, dating yeah. back, you know, like the last eight years. And uh, so there might be a house that has a really strong pet owner or, I mean, mm -hmm. people might be smoking cigarettes in there and I've, I've yeah. got to look them in the eye and go, listen, I, I appreciate that you love your pet. I appreciate <laughs> that you, you've been smoking for like four years, <laughs> yeah. but I, my job is to, <laughs> <laughs> my job is to help you sell this home. Yeah. And if, if it gets to be a, of a sensitive nature, you can always go back and say, now, listen, you, you gave me permission to be honest with you. Remember that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So what I have found is they're starving for honesty. Oh. And it really is right. And this is the nature of the beast of our industry. We're in a hundred percent commission based sales. Mm -hmm. We, a lot of times realtors don't know where their next paycheck is coming from. And they really, they've got to do what they think they have to do, whatever it takes to secure the business. Yes. But I think what they don't understand is that they're not honest with the seller. It mm -hmm. decreases the chances of them selling their, their home significantly. Mm -hmm. And it also means that if they have to change their narrative after the home is listed, yeah. So for instance, conditions bad, you know, this is a price or condition game. Mm -hmm. The price needs to be uh, lowered to meet the condition or the condition needs to be elevated to meet the price. One right. of those two situations needs to happen. And sometimes it's a combination of both. Yeah. But if we have to change our narrative, so we become honest, suddenly, suddenly we become honest after the, the listing <laughs> yeah. agreement signed, <laughs> we've yeah. lost them. Yeah. You know, we may sell that home eventually, mm -hmm. but there's no referrals, no repeat business coming from it after that. Yeah, I love that approach and being authentic. And I like this idea about being soft, you know, being kind, sharing with them that, you know, I'd like to tell the truth with you. And, uh, and that's why, you know, this hit them over the head type of stuff. And, you know, that it's really just be who you are and be authentic, be uh, honest. And so and I love it. And you basically that, like you said, it works every time. And so that's how to get, you know, the FISBO. So we learned on how to get more, more listings, basically through leveraging your, your buyer, how to um, uh, leverage FISBOs and how to be able to do that. And I know that you are, um, in fact, you have a, a formula called the Eddy formula. And I just love that, that you right. have this is E-D-D-I-E, -E. but, um, how do you become an influencer on social media? So we talked a little about how you leverage your buyer, but can you share with us your uh, proprietary information, the Eddie formula? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big rip off and duplicator, so I can't take full credit for the Eddie formula, but I, <laughs> I, did, I did add an extra D to it. So 
<laughs> well, well <laughs> so in that case, it is mine because usually the typical Eddy formula they might see is E D I E. Yeah, yeah. But what I have found is that real estate agents, and it, this may be heavily excuse based, but they yeah. they understand what you're saying, uh, Dr. Hank, and that video and content is mm -hmm. something they need to be focused on. Mm -hmm. But they're like, I have no idea what to post. Like yeah. all the good ideas are taken. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk is, you know, and through his, his books of Crush It and now Crushing It mm -hmm. has been uh, very quick to point out that it's not so much about creating, it's about documenting what you're doing as a real estate agent. So the mm -hmm. first thing we have to do in order to uh, really set ourselves down this path of becoming an influencer on mm -hmm. social media is that understanding what we do is valuable. Mm -hmm. Our expertise is valuable. Yeah. Our industry is one of the pillars of the US economy, of the world economy. Mm -hmm. We have to understand the, the, you know, the weight of that. And far too many agents just have this very poor, you know, it's, it's, a, it's poor self-talk, it's a poor self-image. They just mm -hmm. don't feel like they're interesting. And beyond that, they think they look funny, sound funny. They need to lose weight. <laughs> they can't for the life of them make a video until their hairdresser uh, has time to fit them in for a, a lightning or whatever. You know, there's, I've heard it all. So yeah. the Eddie formula really helps kind of simplify this. And, yeah. and uh, if I can of, just say, Jason, yeah. that, that I, I love that, that, um, you know, this hairdresser idea, it's, for all of us, that if you have a bad hair day, nobody knows it except you. Right. <laughs> you know? Because right. they're concerned about their bad hair or whatever. And the fact is, just to be out there, because the other thing is, oh, I'll stumble up on the words or I'll forget what I'm saying or whatever. Just who cares? You know, everybody, it just shows you're authentic. You know, you're human. So people actually like that. But if you're sitting there scared, people don't like that. But if you're just happy and just having a fun time like we are right now, then it's no big deal. So go ahead. But yeah. Yeah. So just, just be your yourself, you know, yeah. and, and, and don't try to be somebody else, but all right. So the Eddy formula, yeah. so it's going to break it down into categories for you. So the E stands for educate. Okay. The primary D we've already covered. It's document. Mm. The uh, second D is demonstrate. Mm -hmm. The I is for inspire mm. and the E is for entertain. Mm -hmm. Now um, the, the, the entertainment part seems to be, uh, it can be a slippery slope. So I got to just warn some agents out there, what you think is funny may not <laughs> resonate with your entire audience. So be yeah. careful with that one. Yeah. The one that I see agents struggle with the most is mm -hmm. the real inspirational stuff. So they may have to get real and raw and authentic and talk about mm -hmm. they're struggling with an addiction or mm -hmm. um, they're having issues with their marriage or mm -hmm. parenting problems. One of their kids is acting out. But I find this to be huge. If, if somebody can go on a real estate agent's Facebook page and see things about their life and who they are and see that they're a real person with the same real struggles, it's really, really powerful. It makes them very, very relatable. Yeah. And there's a lot of us in this industry that are, you know, older. And so, you know, my parents raised me to believe that, hey, we don't air our dirty laundry out in public. <laughs> but there's been a big shift, uh, you know, yeah. in uh, our society, where as vulnerability has mm. emerged as this big, massive leadership quality. Mm. So kind of keep that in mind. But if you want to play it very, very safe, there's plenty that we can do to educate people on the home buying and home selling process yeah. to really control the narrative. So what's going on right now, if you turn on the news, I think we're hearing a lot of scuttlebutt about a recession and maybe a, a downturn in the economy, rising interest rates. You know, it's always doom and gloom. So right. we have the power now. We have the power. We're, you and I are harnessing that power right now right. to control the narrative in our marketplace. You, What's yeah. really going on? I mean, interest yeah. rates up a little bit, 4.9%, depending on how much money you got to put down and what your credit score is. Yeah. Still really, really low. Um, so, you know, just having those conversations mm -hmm. with people, letting them know that 2019 is going to be a very healthy year in the housing market. It's yeah. not going to be gangbusters, but it's going to be a more of a slow, steady, responsible growth. I think this is a really good narrative yes. uh, to have yeah. with the public. 
You bet. And a couple of comments on that. So I love this being vulnerable. And, and it reminds me of uh, I had my car accident. I think you can see my car there. Wow. Um, that uh, totaled my car three years ago and totaled my body. And I was actually paralyzed from my waist down. And so my doctor, where the doctor is, my PhD is in mental science. And so I'm a head doctor. And so I know that whatever you focus your attention on will grow. And so I focus my attention instead of on the doctor uh, saying that, um, you know, I'll never walk again. Uh, and I'm a Vietnam veteran, and so the VA proclaimed me permanently homebound and permanently handicapped. And so instead of believing any of that, I just started to visualize with God, if you will, and just praying and saying, you know, I love the fact that I'm going to be back to even better health than I had before, that I'm going to walk. And one day, I felt a little movement in my right toe. And then I just focused on that and that movement, breath after breath, day after day, moved up my right leg, across my waist, down my left leg, and voila, and right now I'm standing, you know, and so. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm a walking miracle, but see, for all of us, we're all walking miracles that, you know, we've had these challenges, whether it be emotional or physical or whatever, and for us to share our story, you know, and that, you know, because everybody, thought, oh, Dr. Hank, you got a bang. Well, I didn't have it made when I was in a car accident and I got into a car accident and I attracted that. I take full responsibility for it. But I also found the blessing in all of that. So I love on how you're sharing that. And then also your second point, Jason, is about this, what the other people are saying. Stop honoring the God of other people's opinion about the economy is this or that. We make our own experience. I know people that literally became billionaires because of the old age crash that they right. had in real estate. So it doesn't matter what's going out there. What matters is what's going on here and what's going on here. And in your heart and in your head, you know, where are you? And so you're just right on with that. And so I love that Eddie formula. And, uh, and probably best, I love the uh, vulnerability. And, and then the last thing I want to share too on that entertainment, uh, you know, be entertaining that you know, it's not telling some dirty joke or, you know, exactly. whatever. That, so instead of what I want people to uh, think about, I think, you know, we want to encourage everybody to just think about having fun. You know, it's kind of like you and I right now. You know, we're having fun. We're two human beings. We, we have the same, you know, basic needs that, that and, and we just love helping people become their greatest possibility. And so when you just lighten up, and all of us need to kind of lighten up on everything <laughs> to include our own real estate business. So I love that. Now, if I can, any other questions on or comments on Eddie before we move on? You know, the only thing I would say to people is that yeah. they can feel free to reach out to me both on the FISBO value formula because there's a lot more depth in that. Like, how do I offer the value mm. or just kind of dissecting this Eddie formula? Because still, you know, I just feel like uh, one of my mentors, uh, Sharon Trivata, talks about how real estate training really needs to be paint by numbers. Mm. And we've really got to simplify it down so they, they can feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. And I always message people back if they have a question. That's awesome. Can you share your exact contact information with them that we could, uh, so we could touch base uh, with you? Yeah. So they can email me at Jason at Impact Agent University. Okay. Or you can find me on Facebook. It's Jason McGuire Will, M C G U I R E W I L L. Okay. I'm pretty easy to find. They can really just Google Jason Will Realtor and a bunch of stuff pops up. <laughs> okay. That's great. And it's dot com at the end of your um, email. It is. Okay. Jason at impactagentuniversity.com. Yes. Dot com. Okay, great, great. That's fantastic. And uh, we are going to talk about, I want to talk about impact agent here because I know that, again, because, you know, you've become number one, you're one of the top, you're in the top 1% uh, broker agent team in, in the United States. And, uh, you know, people are really begging you for, hey, I need your help. And you're willing to do that with the agent, uh, impact agent conference that you're going to have uh, coming up in New Orleans in April. And which is awesome. Now, can you also share with us on uh, something about the community pages and uh, business pages and, and why you're a proponent of community pages, but you need to define that first, if you would. <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, there's a lot of real estate agents that 
seem to be overwhelmed with by social media. Mm-hmm. So one of the points I want to kind of just start off by making is that uh, an agent's business page is really good for collecting reviews and for boosting posts, targeting these targeted boosts. Mm-hmm. But I really think like we, we really need, we're going back to that paint by numbers mindset. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple and start with your Facebook personal page. Uh, now, if you can get consistent with the Eddie formula and the content on your personal page, Mm-hmm. then we can handle maybe branching off to a business page or community page. But when mm-hmm. I, I just, I'm very careful when I'm in front of a, an audience of agents to start saying, you know, Facebook, uh, personal page, business page, community page, mm-hmm. uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. They're just like, ah, you know, I can't <laughs> even get consistent with my personal page So start <laughs> right. there, start small, get yeah. consistent. Cause it's about consistency Mm. authenticity which we talked about Mm -hmm. and bringing valuable content uh Mm -hmm. to the marketplace okay so what i have found is is that i have uh you know i have i'm highly leveraged so Uh i can spend uh, a great deal of time on social media figuring it figuring out what the public responds to more yes and i just think that uh, this is all my opinion and i welcome people to disagree but these real estate agent business pages seem to be a dime a dozen to me. Mm-hmm. The agents that I see, and you know, again, we, we said that money flows towards what's different, not what's similar. We established that point early on in the interview. Right. So what is it? I can't, a, a community page is a polar opposite from a business page. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it might also be very valuable to point out that, you know, um, this, book that if people want to read it or get it on audible about building your story brand, Uh this is a very powerful, but the point of that book, you know, building your story brand is to make your consumer, your target audience, the hero, a -hmm. Facebook business page is all about the agent and all about the properties. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're, they're not very diverse in the content that's offered on these pages. Mm -hmm. Some are, but but the majority of them are not. And the majority of them are not successful. So yeah. what I have found by studying real estate agents who are really dominating social media in two parts, both in followers and in engagement, mm-hmm. is they're primarily not talking about real estate. Right. Real estate is <laughs> not what they talk about. Yeah. Real estate, folks, is boring. Like, like yes. if you say, hey, I got a listing, you know, right now that, you know, nobody cares. Now they do on like the buyer example that, that you would use in order to get listings. But, you know, to just kind of say that stuff. But you also said, did you say target audience? Was that the key? Is that what you call uh, 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 who your target audience is? Are those the words that you use? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Target right. audience, yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's building your story that is um, a book and... Building your story brand. I, the author right. escapes me right now. I think I can look it up on my phone and okay. tell you just a minute. Sure. Um, sure. But that is an excellent book in terms of uh, understanding how to connect with your audience. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I think it would be important for people to uh, understand is that people buy real estate in cycles. Mm-hmm. And um, it could be, depending on your marketplace, could be five to seven year cycles. Sure. So unless somebody's in that cycle where they need to sell or they need to buy, mm-hmm. your real estate related content is going to be kind of lost on them. Right. But people really respond to information about their community, whether they live in that community mm-hmm. or they're interested in retiring to that community. Uh, maybe they've got loved ones that live in that community and they want to be connected to that uh, in a virtual way. Mm-hmm. So I have built a community page and I want to break this down really on a granular, uh, granular level for the agents out there that, because I don't want them to sound overwhelmed, but I have over 13,000 followers on Fairhope Alabama Living. So you just go to facebook.com forward slash Fairhope Alabama Living. You can check out the content wow. that I put on there. Yeah. Some of it is original content. It's just a picture I take. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a video clip I take. We, I live uh, in a waterfront community. Okay. So I might get the last minute or two of a sunset, which goes bananas on the page. <laughs> um, taking pictures of the city employees planting flowers in the flower bed. Mm-hmm. Really, really powerful. Wow. Any community events, any restaurants. Mm-hmm. So there's a number of things at play here. So wow. what I'm doing is I'm elevating local businesses. If I go eat somewhere and the service is consistently good, 
I'm going to mm-hmm. shine a light on it. If there's a community yeah. event, a local band playing, uh, mm-hmm. a happy hour, a fundraiser, mm-hmm. they can go to my page and find all this information and then kind of sprinkled in there very subtly is just some real estate stuff. All right. So here's yeah. a new listing, but it's just, it's not, oh, it's not overwhelming. It's primarily about the community. And so what I'm doing here is I'm building a good, what we, what we is referred to as a goodwill river. Uh-huh. So you're offering all this value, all this information and mm-hmm. all this goodwill in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. So much so that when you take a second and be, get a little salesy with your content, you're mm-hmm. easily forgiven. You know, yeah. you're not unfollowed. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not stigmatized from it. They're like, Hey, he's, He's bringing so much value. We'll let him get away with this salesy stuff every time. <laughs> and you build following like crazy. So what I did was I start by getting out there and getting in your community. This is one of the probably the biggest takeaways that I think agents can get from this interview is that your production studio, all you need is mm. in the palm of your hand. This is your video equipment, your, your photography, video yeah social media access. It's all right here. This is, you're already paying for it. So let's use it folks. Right. Most right. agents lack a top of mind awareness with this phone. So yeah. many things are going on around them. Mm-hmm. This is goes back to the Eddie formula. Yeah. Document, don't create document mm-hmm. what you're doing throughout the day. Document yeah. where you're eating lunch, document who you're eating lunch with. Yeah. This yeah. is all happening throughout the day. Wow. So developing a top of mind awareness with your phone, you don't just because you take a picture, Dr. Hank or a video clip doesn't mean you have to use it right then. Right. Just hold on to it, but build up some content on your community page. And then you can do these $5 page promotions. Uh They're just a $5 page promotion through Facebook and it will help you build your audience. Okay. I have a question to ask. Sure. So the community page that, so I understand personal page, my personal page, I understand the business page and how do you do a community page? Is it a separate, is it just like that? It's, it's a separate a silo, if you will, on, a, on another thing I can do where it's just community page or do I join groups or how does that play out? Yeah. So interesting. Um, uh, um, uh can take us down a little bit of kind of peeling back the layers on this with that, okay. with your question there, because yeah. when you go to set up a page through Facebook, it's going to ask you to what category this falls in. Oh, you know, are you a business organization? Uh, are you a public figure? Mm-hmm. Uh, is this a community page? And so no matter what type of page it is, mm-hmm. you're going to get the opportunity for, um, to boost. You can boost, you can do those targeted boosts from any of these pages. Got it. And it it is just a way for you to be like to build top of mind awareness in a much more subtle way because you'll just see, they'll see way more engagement because people are going to like follow and share. So I go back probably every evening and I look at the posts. Facebook lets me know, Hey Jason, your post about the sunset is performing very well on Facebook. Um, you could boost it. You know, they're trying to get some money out of it, but I'll go back and I'll look at that. And there may be like 200 likes. And so I go and I wow. check the likes and I, if anybody who is not already liking the page, I just invite them. Yeah. So I'm organically building the page that way. Yeah. I, I probably, I don't do them very often anymore. In the beginning, mm-hmm. I probably did a $5 page promotion every couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And then this slowly, but surely, yeah. It started to gain momentum. And now it's to the point where um, I've got so many followers on this page that I am really on the cusp of being able to really seriously monetize this thing. Yeah, right, 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 exactly. And, and that's a great word, monetize. And so you actually have educated. Can you give us your uh, that community page of yours again so we can all take a look at it? Yeah, so it's Fair Hope. F A I R H O P E Alabama living. So facebook.com forward slash Fairhope Alabama living. Okay. And you check it out. I mean, I'm repurposing a lot of content that other people are doing. I will, um, sure. if I see a, a photo on somebody else's page or in the newsfeed, I will, mm-hmm. um, I will, for, I will share it to my page. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, oh, this, so you share the stuff then yeah. to your page, and then it's kind of automatic, and and just so everybody understands, and your personal page you can't boost, you can't advertise, and advertising is very inexpensive. 
Facebook, on your business page, you can boost. And now we just found out on the community page. And I have never heard that before, Jason. And I'll tell you, that's why this is a magical discussion, folks, because we're hearing for the first time things that we weren't aware of and how you have. And again, how many followers do you have on that, on, on the uh, uh, Fair Hope? I don't know the exact number, Dr. Hank, but it's over 13,000. That's great. But to give you an example of the power of this in, a, in an exponential way, I've got a, a buddy of mine who um, is over two hours, uh, two and a half hours west of me in mm. the New Orleans market. Oh, yeah. And he has a Instagram account called Eating Nola. He's a foodie. And like New Orleans is like, that's what it's known for food. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. got around 150,000 followers on his Instagram account <laughs> and all he posts on there is food. <laughs> yeah, that is just great. And does he do that on again, a community page or is that his, his business page? Or I, page? I really feel like his niche is Instagram. Okay, and, got and it, so got that's it. an, but that's an important point mm -hmm. because it, it's like finding the platform where you're going to be consistent. Yeah. Right, right. And, right. you know, he's more into that, the Instagram, which is, you know, more of a brand building social media platform, I feel like, where right. I focus on uh, Facebook because it has grown my business. I mean, I, I, as right. an independent brokerage owner, we went through um, really a 20, uh, 24 month period where we had 800% growth. Oh, my God. And it was all based on social media. So recruiting, you know, adding a, a 100 agents to our roster you know, basically <laughs> happen very, very quickly using social media. So I've seen yeah. the results, whether yeah. it's buying, representing buyers, sellers, or growing a brokerage and a team, yeah. the power of Facebook. So that's where I am sure. heavily rooted. Sure, sure. And uh, I just read an article a couple of days ago and uh, uh, where the audiences are in these different social media and Instagram, it's mainly millennials. You know, you're looking at the millennial there, 20 to 35, something, you know, age group. And so if your target is millennials, you do Instagram. If you're going to an older audience, typically it's, you know, Facebook. And uh, but like you say, whatever it is you enjoy and you always have to go to where you enjoy when you enjoy what you like and then you can run from there we're almost out of time here i do have a, a two more things first off is how to have a profitable business of primarily open houses and so can you just share with us for a minute on what what's your secrets to open houses and how you have grown your business by over 800 percent? well we're going to circle back to the eddy formula and okay. it's really about connecting Mm -hmm. this open house to your social media channels through content creation. Got it. So Got it. instead of a real estate agent making a Facebook live video, Dr. Hank, that says, Hey, it's Jason Will with JWRE. I'm having an open house at one, two, three main street this Sunday from two to four. Boring. I would, <laughs> yeah. I would much rather go, okay, here's my house. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two mile radius. There's some great local businesses. Uh, so maybe there's a great coffee shop. You know, we have, you know, in uh, the next town over that we have a, like a faith-based coffee shop that was, you know, established by a, a group of pastors. And you walk oh. in, there's all these inspirational verses and everything on the wall. And it's really cool. So that would be, that'd be an example of a great venue, but maybe it's just yeah. the best cheeseburger you ever had. It's like <laughs> 2.4 <laughs> miles away. I'm going to go set up my tripod, pull somebody over in the restaurant who might be an uncomfortable uh, waitress or waiter, be like, hey, you're gonna be in this video with me. <laughs> Say, like, I'm here at uh, at Dr. Hank's Hamburgers, the best hamburger in Fair Oak, Alabama, which happens yeah. to be 1.2 miles from my open house at 123 Main Street, where I'll be there holding it open from two to four this Sunday. Wow. So I'm elevating the local business. What I found is a lot of times these businesses will share that post, mm. and their employees will share that post. Yeah. And it just spreads like wildfire. But it can also be shining a light on the amenities of the subdivision. Mm -hmm. So leading up to the open house, Dr. Hank, you're, you're scheduling these videos. So maybe Monday morning, I just do a consistent Facebook live that goes, Hey, it's Jason Will with JWRE here to tell you about where I'm going to be this Sunday from two to four. I'm going to be in this subdivision. I'm not going to tell you the exact address. Stay yeah, tuned for that. But here's right. where I'm going to be. Here's where you can <laughs> find me this week. Yeah. And Wednesday, I'm at the local business that's two miles away. Then maybe mm -hmm. Thursday, I'm shining a light on the amenities. Maybe it has an amazing playground, or maybe mm -hmm. there's a boat launch nearby, or some amazing uh, public park for you know yeah. it's for kids. Mm -hmm. So you know, in in that light, 
Yeah. I'm creating content that shines a light on my community, that shines yeah. a light on local businesses. So when, mm-hmm. when we as real estate agents elevate the brand of our community, mm-hmm. elevate the uh, social business, the, the small businesses in our community, mm-hmm. we are thereby elevating our brand. Wow. I just love that. You know, I, something that dovetails in that is I know a video guy who has um, it just himself uh, over a hundred million dollar business. And he did it all just this one way is he, he goes around the community and talks to business owners and interviews business owners about what they do and if they have a special or whatever. And he just uses his phone, you know, everything, the exact same thing right. that you did. And I think he's at uh, like over 30,000 in a small community in California. And so it's the same idea. But what I like about your words is this, this elevate your brand in the community and to really be able to connect because those business owners that, you know, at, at Dr. Hank's hamburger place, which by the way, I can't wait <laughs> that, <laughs> that, uh, uh, that, that, that Dr. Hank, if you interview him and say, Hey, you know, we love your burgers and everything that Dr. Hank will start doing business with you. <laughs> and then, you know, exactly. he'll, he'll be spreading exactly. the word, you know, on you. And so this is exciting and man, we got the energy flow and I can just feel the, uh, the angels, you know, flying all around <laughs> loving this discussion. We're we're just about out of time, but I do want to ask one thing is that, again, because Jason, you have really taken real estate to the next level. You're on the cutting edge, and we've heard things that we never even heard before, even me, and really, I've heard a lot of stuff in, in real estate over the last <laughs> 20 years and with all these podcasts and everything nationally. That, uh, and, and But I do want that people then have asked for you to be of service to them, not to the community per se, but to our industry, and to help real estate agents to grow their business and wealth. And so you started Impact Agent. And can you just tell us a little about your conference that's coming up in New Orleans? Yeah, so if they want more information, they can go to impactagentconference.com. Okay. And, you know, we're going to have a number of great speakers, all of which I have either a personal relationship with or I've seen speak live. Yeah. And so we've been very intentional about who we're bringing in. I. Sure. Um, Tom Ferry, the coaching organization uh, that he runs has changed uh-huh. my life and business. So he is keynoting the event. Oh my but we're, God, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have, it's going to be content that's going to be uh, focused on teams and team building. But we also have an agent that sold over a hundred homes last year as a single agent. Wow. So there's going to be a, a very diverse, uh, you know, very broad content that's going to be provided from the stage. Wow. We're going to have uh, masterminds there for our VIP attendees, one of which is the billion dollar listing presentation where an owner of a very prominent company out of California, they, they had this study, a case study where they took over a billion dollars in listings in a 24 month period. And then we're going to have a team building mastermind the second day where uh, uh, coach John Chiplack is going to open his playbook and really show agents what the top teams that he coaches, and these, these people are doing 500 to 1,000 plus transactions a year. Woo. So what systems and processes do they use yeah. to create these really massive businesses? So, Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that, really what I wanted to do is have this really highly impactful conference, but it's going to be way more than that because we're going to be uh, launching coaching services at the event. Great. But one of the interesting things we're going to do is we're going to be interviewing agents from all over the country and agents from all over the country are submitting content to us (laughs) and it's going to be free content for agents to uh, consume at will by just coming to our website. Wow. And we're going to have it categorized. So if you want to focus on FISBOs, there's going to be a bunch of video tutorials uh, on FISBOs and buyers and scripts and so forth. So uh, we're really excited about it. That's awesome. So folks, it's again, impact agentconference.com. That's where you can sign up for that and have that. That's going to be one of the mega events in uh, in the United States here for real estate agents. So with this, Jason, well, we want to thank you so much for being on the show today. You're just awesome that uh, we know how to, uh, how to contact you again, uh, share again how we can contact you. Yes. Yeah, so you can find me on Facebook. So it's Jason McGuire, M-C-G-U-I-R-E, Will, W-I-L-L. But I tell you, listen, I give up my cell phone number all the time. That may sound crazy. But feel free to call or text me. It's 251-583-9728. 251-583-9728. 
Okay. Ask me a question about the conference or about the FISBO or about the Eddie formula, whatever, I will answer you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, we thank you so much and, and for really your service and your open heart. And, and we appreciate that. And uh, with that, I bid you all, this is uh, Dr. Hank with Agent Wealth Success, wishing you more wealth, more success and more happiness. And this is part of the way to do it with Jason and me. All the best. Bye-bye.